Here is this afternoon's project. It's a 1990s era Craftsman 17 inch rototiller with counter rotating tines. I don't know much about it. I probably had it 20 years and um, it needs to be serviced. So let's figure this out. Well, it's time to service the rotor tiller. How do I know that? Um, I don't think I ever have, and I've owned it for 20 years. So, uh, yeah, I think it's time. Now, having said I've owned it for 20 years, I'll probably catch a little flack on that and not serviced it. I probably serviced it when I first bought it used, and it doesn't get a lot of use. When it does get used, it gets used for like an hour. The other day I fired it up, was using it, and uh, I decided, let's see if there's any oil in it. And there is, and it's black. So it's time to service it. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it outside, pressure wash it, um, and there's not much to it. I'm gonna clean the car, change the plug, and change the oil. Oh, I forgot. I'm gonna change the times on this guy too. Uh, it has what was installed when I bought it, and um, they're not like this anymore. They're kind of, let's just say they're itty bitty. So, uh, let's get to work. We got lucky. I went through and I was pressure washing it and I found the data plate on it. It was under grease and oil and a bunch of other crud. And a uh, couple things. I got the serial number for it, or the model number. I'll put that down in the description. This particular model, the manual, uh, was printed in 1992. Does this make this a 92 model? Close enough for me. Uh, everything on it appears to perfectly match the manual. That makes this a 30 year old piece of equipment. I don't know about you, but the last time I bought something within the last 10 years, that lasted 10 years is amazing. This is 30 years old. Granted, it doesn't get a lot of use, but if you don't flood it, it starts, starts up real quick. Also with that manual, it allowed me to do a couple of things. One, Verify the age, to verify I have the correct spark plug in it, because sometimes they get changed out with one that a guy's got laying around. Uh, so I now have, I have the correct spark plug. Uh, I now know the spark plug gap. I know what type of oil to put in it. And uh, I think that's about it. I'm not gonna put a new air filter in it. I'm just gonna blow that one out. So uh, let's, uh, let's get into this.
Okay, we got her all serviced up. Let's see if she's gonna run. New plug, new oil, sort of clean the air filter. Uh, choke, no choke. Let's go halfway. Put on, yep. Dang thing's 30 years younger than me and it runs better. And that's on old gas. So we got to remember that when we're done, we got to drain all that gas out of there. Now I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to start pulling off some of this uh, metal back here and replace the tines. That's a whole project unto itself, so let's get to work. Kind of give you sort of a view here, so but give me enough room to work. into a little problem. This here is the new tine. And if you notice, the new tine has three holes in it. S supposed to be kind of a universal fit. However, on Amazon, it listed a bunch of models which included this model rototiller. So I installed them. And I got them in and they're great except for they don't fit. If I can get you a view in there, you can see where it's hitting. And there too. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to shorten these up by re-drilling two holes in them and moving these things in a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, what I should have done well, what I should do is just send them back. However, I can't. See, the, the return date on these closed yesterday. 
And because it took me so long to get to this project, I am stuck with redrilling them. So let's get to work and redrill all of these tines. So it's getting ready to start drilling, and I'm thinking I'm going to have to uh, move this back a half inch or so because it's hitting. I mean, that tine, it, there's no mistaking, it's, it's hitting this brace right here. But I got to thinking. maybe that I'm doing something wrong. So I took all the tines off and I started putting them back together and I've already found that I've fixed this one. Now, I, I don't know why, but let me show you how, to, how I fixed this. I didn't fix it, I figured it out, but, and technically I haven't even figured it out yet. Okay, let me get this to a place where I can. So it's in, yeah. So there it hits. When it's like this, it hits. Now watch. If I leave that bolt in and I rotate this guy around to here and I put this guy in, now watch. It fits. And literally all I did was flip it, pivot it off here to here. And I have no idea why, but now it fits. And it's, it's a big difference. It's like an inch or so. This reminded me of when I was a kid and I took the bicycle spokes off my bicycle so I can clean the rims. And then I couldn't put them back together again. Anyway, so these were the correct ones um, for this rototiller. I'll put the link, uh, description and the part number and everything down in the description. Um, they're, they are universal because they've got, well, I don't know, universal, but they fit more than one. And I'm using the same holes. So anyway, if, if somebody could tell me what the difference is between that. And let's see if I can pivot it back around and then flip it over and then put it in this one. Now I'm using the same holes on both of them. And then I put it in this, but now... When it comes around, it hits. This is a square. These, the dimensions on the holes doesn't change. I'm using the same holes. I, I, I don't know why, but if you put it in the wrong, if you put it in the wrong orientation, it doesn't work. But if you put it in the correct orientation, it does work. And literally, I'll do it again. Pull that pen, flip it around. Stick it in there, and now it works. I can't figure it out, but all I know is now it works. These are the correct tines for this. Um, so let me finish putting this thing back together and getting it back in service. The wife already said she needs it back out in the garden, so let's get back to work. a lot of fun. Uh, well, here you go. My 30-year-old uh, rototiller is back in service. Uh, completely serviced, oil's changed, uh, new tines on it. Now, new spark plug, the whole small engine tune-up stuff, I mean, that's no big deal. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty simple. The tines kind of threw me for a loop there for a minute, but uh, actually, threw me for a loop for a couple of days because I kept having to come back and work on it. Uh, but what I found is if you take one off and you put it back on, that's kind of the right way to do it, but it's a real pain in the butt because some of the nuts and bolts on there, um, you have to get pretty creative to get the old stuff off. So 
I took it all off, um, and then I just took a new tine, put it in place, put one bolt in, pivoted it around to where it's the bolts line up, spin it around. If it hits, I just rotate it one hole, and I just kept doing that until I got them all. Um, is it perfect? Nope. Did we make progress? Yes, we did. I fully expect to get another 20 years out of this and, uh, and then sell it off. Um, they don't make stuff like this anymore. I've got other rototillers over there that I can barely keep running. This guy, it's great. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I've got uh, two more videos coming up. Uh, one's going to be, uh, matter of fact, I think they're both. They're both going to be woodwork with um, uh, laser engraving, and one of them I'm going to combine science fiction, wood turning, and laser engraving all in one project. So, anyway, thanks for watching.